So if you're getting into game design, it's really, really hard to figure out like what kind of tools or programs, applications, they're sometimes called, do we need? Each tool is there to serve a purpose. So for us, when you have to figure out what is this thing that we need, why do they help us? So let's talk about kind of the top five tool categories and types of tools that you need to know as a game designer. Hi everybody, I'm Troy Dunaway. I have over 35 years experience in games. I've worked on over 100 games. I've worked at Microsoft, Sony, Disney, Ubisoft, EA. I help create the program at CG Spectrum for game design, right? Now, not everything we use is a standalone application. Some things might be part of another program. So for example, if you use the Unreal Engine, which we teach here at CG Spectrum, you might want an add-on for it. You know, that's still kind of another tool. That tool has maybe a very specific thing that it does. And so it kind of works within the program itself to provide additional functionality. For example, level design. Unreal does some really great stuff. But it's not always the most efficient at doing certain things. We might need an extra tool that fits our game, our needs, right? And so, so each tool, each thing that we do is there to serve a purpose. So for us, when you have to figure out what is this thing that we need, this thing's called tools, why do they help us? They help us go faster, right? And so do we need a tool for everything? No, sometimes we can brute force stuff. Sometimes we can do things the hard way. Sometimes we can use an old tool. But sometimes, you know, when you're doing that thing 100 times a day and there's 10 of you on a team and you're all doing that, that means 1,000 times a day, you know, and that thing even just takes a little bit of, of you know, some minutes. It's that death by 10,000 cuts. That little thing can turn into a lot of extra work on a daily or weekly basis. So sometimes then we write a tool that makes us, you know, do that thing a little bit faster, right? Um, or maybe make the quality a little bit better or do it in a way that we couldn't do it with something else, right? So there's a lot of different reasons for why we need different tools. But some tools are very expensive. Some tools are cheap. Some tools have you know, um, versions that might be open source, free, cheap. Other ones might have you know, a much more expensive licensing you know, program. It's really up to you to figure out what fits your or your team's needs and your budgets and things like that. But almost all the things we're gonna talk about today, there is free versions or open source versions available that are mostly equivalent. Um, they might be as good but they may not be as mainstream. So here at CG Spectrum, we tend to teach you tools that more your A, AA, AAA, you know, professional teams are using. What are they using day to day? Learn those tools. But does that mean all of them do this? Absolutely not. There's no standardization really across our industry. You know, even game engines, things like that, you know, no game engine has more than about 30% of the market. So some of these tools like the Unreal Engine, even though it's incredibly popular and incredibly good, still only has 30% of the total market share. Right, so there's a lot of diversity within these tools, within these things that we're gonna talk about today. So let's talk about kind of the top five tool categories and types of tools that you need to know as a game designer. But I'll also mention a bunch of others and we'll put in the comments, you know, a breakdown and links to all of this so you can kind of look at it later. But first and foremost, you know, our number five on the list is documentation. Every day as a game designer, we're gonna do some kind of documentation. So this is the easy one. I use Google Docs um, and all of its forms, you know, whether that's spreadsheets, presentations, documentation, things like that. The Microsoft Suite is just as good and equivalent. Depends on your preference. There's no good or bad between either one. Um, we also often use a program called Confluence. Confluence is often linked with another program called Jira, which is used for bug tracking and stuff and often for scheduling as well. Those two are by the same company, Atlason, and they also um, provide a wide variety of stuff. Um, Confluence being more of a wiki structure versus a document structure, two different ways of kind of working in that. Other people will use other types of document management software, other similar features, other similar stuff like ClickUp or other types of things. There's a lot of competitors in this space now about information management. And that's really what documentation is all about. And that's a big, big part of what we do every day you know, in our jobs. Next, for some game designers, and not everybody has to know this, but I think that it's a good skill for most game designers to understand is how to do interface design. There's a, you know, there's a lot of synergy between what game design and interface designers do. We're often different jobs, but again, we have to influence each other and work together. And so being able to put together wireframes, game flows, things like that, um, through programs like Figma um, are some of my favorites to be able to put together and understand, you know, how is the, the visual interface, the controls, the on-screen HUDs and all these other things, how they all work together, you know, to come together. Figma is a great tool for doing stuff like that. Next, we need to be able to visualize our data, right? So this is not things that are necessarily that a public's going to see. This is for me, for my team, for documents and things like that. So I want to be able to go in and do flow charts. I want to do mind maps. I want to do infographics. 
I'm gonna go in and have a little bit of art skill, go in and maybe make some icons. You know, there's a bunch of different stuff that I'm gonna use in my day-to-day, -day, you know, visualization of my information to help my team understand my concepts better, to see how things work together, link together, go together. And so often I'll use Visio for Microsoft, Miro, or Lucidcharts to do that. But there's lots and lots of different programs out there that can do the same thing, you know, both for free and cheap, or some have a free version with a more, you know, paid version these days. Um, that you can pay monthly for, for, you know, more extended features. Next is just visualization in general. We need to be able to put together some graphics. We need to be able to put together mockups. We need to be able to put together these things. And so you really want to have a program that does both 2D pixel editing, like Photoshop, and as well as 2D vector art, you know, stuff like Illustrator. So the full Adobe suite in general, I just highly recommend. And I'd add in there as well that, that you know, uh, video editing is also really important. So, you know, Adobe Premiere and After Effects and stuff like that also should be in your stable of, of know-how. Uh, being able to get to visualize those things, put together mock-ups, put together a lot of stuff as things that we do, you know, every day as a game designer. And last is, you know, game engines. Now, you know, it's probably the most important thing to learn. Again, here at CG Spectrum, we teach the Unreal Engine. You know, I think it's probably the best engine out there currently for PC console games. Um, you know, the um, Unity and other engines are still good. Um, they, you know, Unity works incredibly well in mobile, especially. And, you know, some people are going to, you know, hate on this, but they may, you know, think that Unity is better, vice versa. It's just, a, it's just a point of reference. I've been using Unreal forever, you know, and it's, it's an engine I'm familiar with. So it's what I stick with, right? Um, but every game, every project, again, has its needs, um, has its budgets, all those kind of things. And so regardless of what you learn, remember that most game engines tend to kind of work the same way. So as long as you learn one, it's not too hard to, to relearn the next one. You kind of have to understand kind of the fundamentals. And then remember as a game designer, you need to worry about things like communication through like Slack. You need to do brainstorming, you know, visual identification. You know, I'm always looking at concept art, stuff like that. I use um, programs like PureRef to kind of sort, organize all my, all my concept art. Um, it's handy to know databases and relational databases, SQL, data collection, things like that. There's a lot of stuff in the analytics and telemetry, things like that, especially as we go into live operations, but whether we're working on our, on our game data or other kinds of data, going from spreadsheets into you know, a database is also really handy. We mentioned Jira earlier. Bug tracking is something that you know, once we get to a certain stage, we're gonna be in that Jira software pretty much daily. Uh, but it's really kind of more about the tasks and, and then putting bugs in that we find. It's relatively simple to use, but it is, you know, it is going to be key and critical to most teams' uses, whatever that is that you, know, that you need to be able to do. Next on a day-to-day -day basis, we have some kind of task management software. So that could be Microsoft Project. Jira, again, is, you know, has a um, scheduling software built in, Asana, Trello. There's lots and lots of different things depending on the type of, of project management stuff you're doing. Next, the thing we use day to day is usually source control. So we might use, you know, any kind of different, you know, um, source control software out there, Perforce or whatnot. There's many different types of, of um, software that's both free, cheap, you know, and, and whatnot. And so you get, it's important to learn how to protect your data, back it up, um, share it with other people, you know, locally or across the world. You know, that's something that you need to understand. You might, if you have a programming background, or if you're more technical, need to understand you know, how to program, do you need an IDE, which is, you know, an environment, you know, to run C, C++, which is typically like Microsoft Visual Studio, something like that is helpful to know. You might need to know a scripting language like Lua or Python. Um, it helps to be able to at least understand the basics of 3D modeling animation through 3D Studio, Maya, Blender, other types of programs like that are very handy to know. And last is just, you know, you can know how to edit and modify audio files, you know, how to tweak these things. Remember, you don't need to do 3D modeling are, you're not building this content yourself. You're learning how to modify it, tweak it. So if you have a problem with it, if you need an audio a little bit you know, longer, if you need an animation a little bit tweaked, if you need you know, something a different color, you can go in and do some of that yourself. Um, there is team members quite often that can do that for you, but sometimes they're busy. So being a little self-sufficient there, but don't you know, neglect on the other tools first. These are kind of secondary things to learn. So hopefully this kind of helps you. It gave you a little bit of insight and gave you some places to start researching and see what you know, professional teams use you know, day to day in our, in our workflows. If you like this, please like and subscribe. We hope to see you next time. Take care now.